Armada Kickoff is brought to you by Community First Credit Union, Winn-Dixie, Baptist Health, Bowden Eye and Associates, Brumos Automotive, and Coastal Spine and Paint Center. Hello and welcome into Armada Kickoff. The inaugural season is over for the Armada, and now we get ready for what promises to be a very busy offseason. We'll have highlights from the season finale and a preview of the NASL Championship. We'll also hear from the players and head coach Eric Date about the future. Plus, Bob Veal returns to Bob's boot room. And we'll have Andy Kidd and David Hayes joining us here on the Analyst Roundtable to talk about what comes next for the Armada. But we start with the 2015 season finale. It has been a long first season for the Armada. Some of the players on the squad began preparing for the inaugural year in July of 2014 when the club held its first tryouts. First preseason match was February 7th, so nearly nine months later, the season would conclude with a matchup against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers, who needed at least a draw to earn a postseason spot. Fan Appreciation Day, final match, a lot of pomp and circumstance at Community First Park, Section 904, and the supporters were out there in force, over 9,000 in attendance, even the flyover overhead as the Armada got set to take on Fort Lauderdale. A little help on the Armada side, that's Morgan Bryan of the U.S. Women's National Team, the world champion, returning to her soccer roots. Eric Day trying to get a victory in his final game of this seven-game stretch for him as the interim head coach. Early on, Keita, the acrobatic shot, turned aside by David Mavis. Take another look at it. May have been on target. Mavis got a hand on it. It remained nil-nil in the early going. 33rd minute now. Castrion feeding it back. Lucas Scaglia sent in off the foot of Castrion. Still a nil-nil contest. The Armada had the bulk of the chances in the first half. There were a few chances for Fort Lauderdale, though they largely sat back in that first half. Miguel Gallardo coming in to clean things up. It was even at the break, nil-nil. Sean Nicklaw trying to get some work done here for the Armada as well. On the cross, first it was Keita leaving it for Nicklaw. And then Nick Law trying to work hard. Walter Ramirez with the challenge. Nick Law goes down. This is kind of how the second half started to unfold. A little more aggressive Fort Lauderdale side. There were some chances, though, for the Armada. Cross in by Jamal Johnson. Nobody was making the run. And the Armada still even at nil-nil. 56 minute now. Lucas Scaglia leaves it a little chip. And Akil Barrett tries to turn on it. Nothing doing there, though, still through 79 minutes. No score until this. Marlon Freitas, who was very active, little bump, got past Matt Boehner, got it past Miguel Gallardo, take another look. Really an unfortunate carom off Boehner's knee, and that was the difference. Freitas and Fort Lauderdale at this point can just smell the postseason appearance. Freitas off with the shirt, looking forward to a chance at the NASL Championships. Up 1-0. One, one last chance for the Armada. Pascal Million on a run out. Ivan Guerrero just grabs the shirt. An obvious yellow card here. It does set up Meshach Jerome for a blast from distance. Couldn't repeat his heroics from a week ago. That's the way it ends. The Armada fall 1-0. Just their third home loss of the season. And Fort Lauderdale is heading on to the NASL Championship. Yeah, we knew coming in we were going to, you know, we needed to move the ball quick and, uh, you know, try to, you know, uh, get in those dangerous passes. And, you know, we were able to do that. Unfortunately, we were able to, to put one in the back of the net. And, you know, unfortunately, I made a mistake back there and uh, wasn't able to clear the ball. And, you know, they punished us. And, you know, that, you know that's how the game goes sometimes. I'll be lying if I said that we were satisfied. Um, you know, we tried our best. And I feel like that was uh, the common denominator throughout the season is we always tried our best. Unfortunately, maybe at times we're a little bit uh, misguided, but uh, you know we have a lot of players. I have a lot of pride and a lot of integrity, and uh, you can see tonight, even though we were playing uh, for no play of hopes, we still tried our best, and unfortunately we got unlucky at the end. Well, you feel you feel for the boys. Obviously, it was good. We were very good. We kept the ball. We did some things we wanted to do. Um, yeah, they got some good players, and a good player found a way, kind of capitalized on a mistake of ours, and, and put the ball in the back of the net. They're a good team for a reason. And you take a look at the numbers, the Armada had the best of shots, shots on goal, corner kicks, committed fewer fouls, had the top possession. They just couldn't find the net. Strikers did it once, and that was all it took to send Fort Lauderdale to the NASL championship. The fair and fair man of the match last weekend went to midfielder Lucas Scaglia. 
Sunday's match against the Fort Lauderdale Strikers didn't quite end the way the Armada hoped, but that doesn't mean they ever quit, especially Lucas Scaglia. Throughout the 90-plus minutes of the match, he did not stop, helping out the defense, midfield, and even the forwards. Scaglia was a key player on the pitch. His role as defensive mid is key in protecting the back line and pushing the ball forward as often as possible. It's been quite the year for Armada fans, the city of Jacksonville, and most importantly, the players. Christy caught up with a few of the guys to see what they hope to accomplish in 2016. There's been some highs and lows this season, but Armada fans supported their team no matter what, and players say they can expect nothing but the best next year. As anybody wants to accomplish a championship, you know, it's our first year, like I said, uh, you know, everything we, you know, all the trials and tribulations, that's what you learn the most, and that's where you gain the most, uh, you know, as a team and, and things like that. So, you know, we'll take all that, you know, you know, give us a fire in our belly for next season and, and hopefully bring that in for next year and, and, you know, do well. I think despite the fact that we didn't uh, end up making it to the playoffs and achieving the goal, there's a lot of positive to take out of this season. You know, we have some stellar performances. We have some great wins against the best teams in the league. Um, we had some guys that, you know, got, got, were given a, a chance for the first time and they did great. Uh, and the veterans that came out and, uh, you know, they, they showed us the way. So uh, I think there's a lot to look forward to. Obviously, there's a lot to, uh, to learn, a lot of mistakes that we're going to fix. And I'm just very excited for next year. You know, I think there's a lot of potential. Uh, the one thing I want to say is to thank all the fans. How, I mean, how appreciative we are. I think we have the best fans in the league. I mean, to be a first year franchise and to have people like this tonight, 9,000 people, it just shows you, you know, the, the potential that we have here in Jacksonville. I just hope that they continue to support us. They get all their family and friends involved because next year is going gonna, gonna to be even, even better. Armada fans had a week to vote on their favorite player and play of the year. The Armada is certainly full of great players and fans witnessed some of the team's greatest moments at Community First Park. So here are the winners for both categories. Out of six players to choose from, Haitian-born midfielder Pascal Million won player of the year by 49% of the votes. Million appeared in 24 matches for the Armada with 22 starts. He notched six goals and four assists while earning three man of the match mentions. On the other end, fans had 10 plays to choose from for play of the year. Coming in at number one for favorite play, none other than Jamal Johnson's record-setting 12-second goal in the home opener for the Armada against FC Edmonton. Not to mention, this happened in front of a record-setting crowd with over 16,000 fans watching the Armada and Johnson make history. The Armada wrapped up the season on Sunday, but that doesn't mean they are necessarily done. During the month of November, the team will be out and about in the community with fans. Then they take a short break during the holidays and return to the pitch in January for training. Then in February, fans can expect the boys in blue to take on the Philadelphia Union of the MLS once again. Remember last year? Over 14,000 fans in the Armada won 3-1 thanks to a goal from Fabricio Ortiz, Keita, and Lucas Trejo. Date and time is yet to be determined, but look out on armadafc.com for all the information. It's that time again. Current season ticket owners can renew, and those who want to become season ticket owners can join for next year. For as low as $10 per match, and you are guaranteed at least 17 matches for 2016. Call 844-2-ARMADA or online at armadafc.com. Coming up next, we go around the NASL. The championship semifinals are set. We'll check in on the teams who have made that push for the title. And Bob Veal joins us in Bob's boot room. Stick around. More Armada kickoff is straight ahead. Throughout the year, fans got into teams of three and bubble battled it out on the pitch during halftime at Armada matches. The winners won win Dixie gift cards and moved on in the bracket to play the next team. The final matchup was played on Sunday and the winners were Corey Gordon, Kyle Whitlow and Michael Patterson. Each member won 2016 season tickets and win Dixie gift cards. Cole. Thank you, Christy. The 2015 regular season is in the books and after this past weekend's action, the NASL championship is set. Let's go around the North American Soccer League. We start in Carolina with the Railhawks hosting Indy. Both teams shooting for a mid-table finish. Ninth minute, Nacho Novo notches the goal for the Railhawks, his 11th of the season. Later, Carolina getting a goal from T. Shipolani. Fresh off signing his new contract with the squad. 3-1, Carolina wins at home in front of over 6,000. Atlanta and Ottawa Fury can clinch the number one seed with a win in this one. But Atlanta's Junior Burgos has other ideas in the fourth minute. Virgos with the goal, match finishes in a 1-1 draw. 
So the door open for the Cosmos to take the top seed with a win. Tampa can clinch the fourth spot in the championship with a victory. Scoreless at halftime, 54th minute, it's the great Raul. In his last regular season match as a member of the Cosmos, he'd announced his retirement earlier in the week. Cosmos lock up the top seed in the NASL championship with a 2-0 victory. Minnesota United hosting San Antonio level at one in the 85th minute. Rafael Castillo gives San Antonio the lead. It looks like the Scorpions will take the victory, but Philippe Alassane in stoppage time feeds Kevin Venegas 2-2 the final as Minnesota United heads to the postseason as the third seed. All right, here are the final standings. New York Cosmos winning the overall number one seed. They had to go down to the second tiebreaker, which is total goals. Goal differential was the same. Points were the same with the Cosmos and Fury. Minnesota United locked into that third seed. And then Flo uh, Fort Lauderdale Strikers, thanks to the victory over the Armada, get in as a number four seed. Now notice, between the third seed and the fourth seed, there is a 12-point difference there. And you look at the difference between the fourth seed and the final team in the table. As you look at the second page of the standings, the Armada at the bottom, this is... There's only 10 points difference between the Strikers and the Armada. Pretty dramatic here. Jacksonville finishes on the bottom of the table and will be looking to do what Ottawa did this year in their second season, that is go to the NASL Championship. As for the NASL Championship, here's how it all lays out for next week. The Cosmos will take on the Fort Lauderdale Strikers in Coney Island, and Ottawa entertains Minnesota United in that other semifinal. Now let's head to Bob's Boot Room, presented by Nike. Here are Bob Veal and Christy Andauer. Thanks so much, Cole. Bob, what an unfortunate way to end the season for the Armada, but you have to say they played pretty well. Yes, they did. They had a great game. And uh, what we're going to highlight today is Matt Boehner. I think he was in the top three of the players' selection this year. So let's look at some of his highlights Absolutely. in the last game. We've not done that before. He was the most consistent player all season. All right. Let's have a look. Here he is, the beginning of the game. Great position, little nudge there, takes the ball away. And what I love about him, cool. Look at that, plays the ball out. We start the attack from the back again. Great positioning for Boehner there just to take that ball away. Let's move on to the next one. Here he is again. Goal side of the player, a little nod out, not a great header, but we didn't get into trouble for it. And let's watch him again. Here, moves across to the player, times his tackle well, bang. Nowhere to go, boots it into the crowd. Good way to clear the ball. And this is a great little move from him. One, two here. This, is, this was three. probably my favorite play. <laughs> but if he'd missed this, he it would have been wide terrible. open. Look at this play here. We'll slow it down. Bang, turn, drag the ball back, turn again. Yes. That's a class act, isn't it? Yes. And then play the ball back <laughs> I wish to the I goalkeeper. Could do that. <laughs> and here, again, look where he is. High on the ball, sees his chance. The ball travels right. a yard in front of the yeah, player. Yeah, he's our centre back. And oh, look, look at him where he is. Look came. at him. And here is the final play of the season. Very unfortunate. It goes off Bainer's thigh. They score 1 0. He lies there. He can't believe what it. What a finish to the season. Very unfortunate. He was in the right position, goal side of the player, and it just rebounded off his knee. Well, I mean, hopefully Matt has this effect on the team next year. Yeah, hopefully he comes back and uh, he plays as well as he's done this season. I think he's made a great move from the USL to the NESL. I want to see him improve even more next season. Okay, thanks so much, Bob. Cole? All right, thank you, Christy. Coming up, the Analyst Roundtable. Andy Kidd and David Hayes join me to talk about what lessons were learned in 2015 and what they could expect in 2016. Stick around. More Armada kickoff is straight ahead. Another fun contest that's gone out throughout the year is the Brumos Grand Prix. Three participants at each match would race an obstacle course inside human-sized hamster balls. The final three contestants competed in a semi-final target kickoff. Then the two highest scoring contestants were told to choose a key fob. Whatever car sounded off, that person was the winner. George Goodrich ended up picking the winning key fob and won a two-year lease on a Brumos car, up to a $15,000 value. 
The Armada Social Rewards Program is a great way to stay connected with the team and earn free stuff. Yeah, I said free. All you have to do is log on to armadasocialrewards.com, create an account, link your social media accounts, and start earning tokens. Here, every week on Armada Kickoff, we pick a random winner, and congratulations to Mason Butler. You've won an autographed roster card. And now let's head over to the roundtable presented by Subway. Cole? Players that you can switch around and we're going to be very strong. We saw a lot of different players, a lot of different lineups. All right, thank you, Christy. Here on the Analyst Roundtable, we have David Hayes, Andy Kidd. All right, Andy, how do you sum up this season? If you're going to describe this season to somebody who didn't see it, how do you do that? Well, I mean, it was an exciting season for sure. First year expansion team. You don't know what's happening going in. Had its ups and downs. You know, there were some, uh, some peaks and some valleys. But I think at the end of the year, I think all the fans should be excited about what the team was able to put together, the franchise was able to put together as far as putting a competitive product out on the field. And, you know, looking into next year, you know, there's a bright future. The Armada are not that far away. They're a win here versus a draw or a draw versus a loss away from being in the playoff hunt. Yeah, you know, one of the things, David, we noted earlier is that when you look at the standings, there's a bigger gap between the third place team and the fourth place team who were both in the playoffs than there is between number four and number 11 in the yeah. NASL. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I touch on Andy. I mean, I think uh, as an organization, we had success off the field and we failed on the field. Um, so, I, you know, I, mean, I, I think we're, we've learned a lot from this year. The fans have been great. The ownership has uh, been great. Um, the front office has been great. We just didn't get it together on the field. What did the Armada learn about what's happening on the field in this league? You have to have players that are, that are going to grind it out for the entire season and the entire game. I think a lot this season we had a lot of players that, that can play the game, but essentially they're not going to die for the game. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we need a couple more of those players so we can survive. And that would, that would be the difference between winning on the road or keeping a lead. Yeah, and I think you, you can't come in. I think they probably learned that you can't come in and have a system and, be, you know, and say we're going to run the system regardless of the players we have and regardless of the league we're playing in and regardless of who we're playing against. I think uh, Coach Dade's approach kind of at the end of the year was a little different. You know, he kind of adjusted, had different, uh, kind of a different style based on the players he had, kind of a different style uh, based on who they played against. Some games they were playing, sitting in a little bit more with Coach Dade, depending on who they played against. Some games they were more attacking style. So um, I think, you know, they learned that, you know, you're going to have to adjust depending on those factors. Did they learn enough this year that will be applicable next year? In other words, is the league going to be changing dramatically Two new teams coming in, mm -hmm. different players coming in, some great players like Raul and Senna going out. Is the NASL going to be that different next year, or do they have to learn these lessons all over? No, I think I don't think you have to learn the lessons all over again. I think you know expansion teams, you know, going into the second year, I think there's a big jump there. I think there's an opportunity for a big jump there. You, you've, you've gone through the woes of the road, you know, the road struggles this year. You kind of now all the players are a year older, have been around each other again. They have another pre, I mean, for another year they've had a preseason together again with their coach again. So I don't think you have to worry about, you know, coming out and, you know, having to learn all that over again, even with new teams and new players. And um, I think you're still going to have some of the favorites, though. I think you're still going to have New York's going to be a favorite. I think Ottawa's got something going really mm -hmm. strong. Minnesota's been uh, very strong as well. So I think you, you still are going to look to those franchises as the teams to be. And Correct. obviously the Florida teams. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I touched on Andy's, um, you know, and your question is that, I think there's going to be players that leave the league, uh, and then there's going to be great players that come into the league. So that'll be the thing. But the coaching staff, most of them will stay the same. Uh, you have Puerto Rico, Miami mm -hmm. comes in. Um, but most of those coaches that have been there, that like your Lagos and, and um, Carolina, mm -hmm. um, right. they have their, their kind of go-to system and that they're going to play and they're going to find those same players. So I, I think from that standpoint, it won't change too much, but the players will a little bit. Andy Kidd, David Hayes, thanks so much for your great work during the roundtable this year. We'll see you next week for the year in review. We'll have all the yeah, analysts together. Be It'll be a big party and we'll see if anybody agrees on anything. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. Coming up, how the Armada players said thank you to the fans in 2015. Stick around. We check out the Twitterverse next. Although the 2015 season is coming to an end, 2016 is just around the corner. Join the Armada next year with 2016 season tickets, which are now on sale for as low as $10 per match, and there's a payment plan to make it even more affordable. It's time to dive into the Twitterverse world to see what Armada players and fans were up to this week. Lindsay tweeted out this photo with David Sierra's gloves, and she says thank you so much. Akil Barrett tweeted out, thanks for an amazing season, Armada and Section 904. I enjoyed every bit of my first year. Ryan tweeted out this photo post-match on Sunday, signing autographs, and he says, thank you, Armada, for such a great season. 
And last but certainly not least, Marcos Flores Instagram this photo, and he says, quote unquote, thanks to every member for living beside us throughout the whole season. I mean, Cole, those are some touching words, and I just can't believe the season's actually over. Yeah, and obviously the players are disappointed that they didn't achieve what they wanted to. Right. But I, one thing they did achieve is a great connection with the community. I think that was very obvious, you see, yeah. with the fans and we, out in public uh, events and appearances at I schools agree. and so forth. They did a great job as far as that's concerned. You get the latest on the Armada all throughout the offseason online at armadafc.com and our, our radio show, Armada Soccer Show, is Fridays at 3 on Sports Radio 930. Also, starting next week, look for the Armada Season in Review special right here on CW17. It's been quite a season, Cole. I can't believe it. Like I just said, it's over, but like you mentioned, the fans, I feel like, know the players just like we know them. And let me also point out that next week uh, when we start airing the off-season special, that will be your last chance to see this one. She'll be leaving us to join Miami FC, yep. the new NASL franchise, so the rivalry has begun. <laughs> has Miami begun FC, right here. watch out. Right here. So, I'll, I'll, I'll battle it out. <laughs> we need to beat Miami yeah. next year. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Christy Endauer. I'm Cole Pepper. Here's a little bit from Christy through her year here in Jacksonville. <laughs>spoke to Pascal Million earlier and he told me I just can't wait to step on the field to help my brothers fight and protect our home field. Who's going to start tonight? That is the key question. My vote goes to Akil Barrett. The last game of the year and it's also Fan Appreciation Day. Hi guys, thanks so much. All right, Keita. Your fourth professional goal, take us through that. Over the past week, we've had many emotions from Pascal Million. After the Tampa Bay Rowdies match, he said, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we have to do it. Until then, for Bob Veal, for Christy Andauer, Cole Pepper saying thanks so much. Back to you guys. Back to you guys. Back to you guys. Back to you guys. Muchas gracias. Thanks, guys.